<laughs> if you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this, truckers, have you ever gotten spooked or creeped out while parking overnight somewhere? If so what happened? I used to haul salt water off of well sites in Oklahoma on the night shift. I was standing at the rear of my trailer as I was loading out in BFE somewhere when I heard gravel crunching like someone was walking towards me. Got that feeling where you feel you're being watched. Stepped around the trailer towards the sound and shined my flashlight at a cow licking the side of my trailer. Pulled over for a break on the way to Melbourne from Sydney at a truck stop. No street lights or anything, pitch black. No other trucks or cars at the stop. I turn off my lights. I switch the truck off. Do the curtains. Lock the truck from both sides. Jump into bed. Set my alarm and set my phone above me in the compartment. I was rolling over from side to side for around 5 to 10 minutes, I couldn't get to sleep due to it being prime summer temperatures, reaching around 30 degrees at night. I'm looking up at the ceiling mentally planning out the day ahead, suddenly the passenger side door opens up slightly, cabin light turns on. What the fuck? Now, the truck is fairly a late model and pristine condition so there's no question about door being faulty or anything. I just sat there for what felt like eternity expecting someone to come up and see me sitting there with a solid rod in my hand that we use for tightening belts. No one came up, nor was there any noise at all. Just quiet, eerie silence. I grabbed my torch, and jumped down, walked around the truck. No other trucks were around. Nor were there any cars. It was just me and my fully loaded B-double. After around 5 to 10 minutes of getting fucked around with, I locked up and went to bed again. Woke up next morning, yawned, Fixed myself up along with the bed. Opened the curtains, and FML there's a cemetery next to the stop where I parked. Hunger and laziness all escaped upon realization, grabbed keys, fuck putting shoes on, fuck putting pants on, switched truck on and then just got the out of there ASAP. Back when my dad was a truck driver he stopped to sleep in a lot one night. The guy he leased his truck from happened to see him park there and in the morning when my dad went to the restroom this guy used a spare key and hide in the sleeper. Once my dad was on starting to leave the guy reached out and grabbed him. My dad said he freaked out so he just bailed out of the truck. It was moving around 5 miles per hour. Otter driver here. In Nevada off the 80 there is a rest area in the middle of the desert where you can sleep or just use the outhouse. It's the middle of the night and it's super quiet and dark. I had been listening to horror stories on YouTube, so it didn't make this stop to the restroom any more pleasant. The parking is about 500 feet away but lot was not lit and there was no moonlight due to a new moon. I get my sanitary wipes and my knife step out the truck and dart to the little hut restroom. I look like a total tool if anyone was watching. When I get there I open the door and it definitely felt like a scene out of a B movie. The light in there was so dim I was better off without it. The whole time I took care of business I was waiting for a hand to come up and graze my bum like in the hills have eyes too. It was so quiet and dark and totally out of the norm for me. I found myself clutching my knife ready to lunge at anything. I ended up scaring the CRP out of myself, ran to the truck and sped out of there never to return at night. There are stories you hear about from other drivers that will make you never want to stop in rural places. My boyfriend is a truck driver who routinely does midnight runs. Oddly enough I asked him this question myself a few days ago. He told me that one night he getting ready to park in a lot next to a truck stop. He said it looked like there was no lights, no cars, no sign of anyone but he said screw it he was tired. He woke up the next morning parked on the side of the road with three highway patrol vehicles behind him. He was about 15 miles away from the truck stop he parked at. Thing is? He was sleeping in his camper the whole night. He has no idea how he got on the side of the road and logic says someone tried stealing the truck and succeeded. And the police convinced him of this happening as they saw a man in a black jumpsuit running away from his truck into a nearby field. Even then, he still feels uneasy about the whole situation. Apparently the doors were still locked from the inside and there was no real sign of anyone trying to break in. I used to drive truck in northern Manitoba. There's a road in the northeast you can drive for several hours and see very few vehicles. This road is quite flat and straight in stretches. Of course, this is deep in the bush. One day I saw something cross the road in the distance. Very large, easily past the hood on my truck. But not long, like a moose or elk. Just tall. It disappeared into the bush and as I drove by the spot the hair on the back of my neck stood up. I heard days later a tow truck driver describing on the radio his encounter with a similar creature, only he was much more clear he had spotted Bigfoot. This guy went to some length to explain he didn't want people thinking he was crazy. But he was sure what he saw. 
I asked an Aboriginal client of mine in a nearby community and he said the elders spoke of them as commonly the same way they spoke of the other animals. I don't know what I saw that day but I'm certain it wasn't a bear, moose, deer or elk. I just don't know what the hell it was. Two stories, maybe not winners but creepy overnight parking for sure. I was really new to the business and had parked at a stop in Texas en route from one place to another. It was August. There was nothing unusual about this situation. I was in the middle of a parking lot with 70 odd other trucks. I woke up with a start six hours later to the truck shaking and rolling, hellacious noise all around, and a psychedelic light show blasting me from every direction. It was a severe thunderstorm that I'd had no idea was coming. Wind, pounding rain, thunder, and lightning to beat hell. Being in a truck during a storm is closer to being in a tent than in a house. I'd never experienced it before, and even though I grew up with this kind of severe weather, I lay there in this tossing, heaving sensory party going, I don't even know where I'd go right now to get safe if I had to, hell, I don't even know how to find out if this is severe or regular or a tornado. I was really tired the next morning. 2. I parked for the night somewhere in southwest Michigan, on the way to Grand Rapids. Again, a truck stopped full of trucks. Shut down and went to bed. I woke up looking at one of the cabin lights, which was on. I think, fell asleep with the lights on again genius then freeze. The light I'm looking at only comes on if you deliberately turn it on, which I never did, or if the door is open. Just then I felt the slight roll of the cab that's telltale whenever someone is climbing up. I wish I had some heroic Rambo shit I could claim I did, but I can't. I yelled. Now, I can make myself heard in very loud environments pretty easily, and this was the dead of a quiet night, and I yelled, get out. Loud enough to send Legion into the Gerasene pigs. There was a frenzied scrambling and the truck rocked some more. Then I hear a very small woman's voice, I'm sorry. I got the wrong truck. Nothing from me for a second, then, are you okay? Yeah, just get the fuck out of here. Moral of that story, lock your doors. She was either a driver or a prostitute, and it doesn't matter because, either way, she got the wrong truck. Have a trucker story from the extended family. An uncle used to drive a lot and he always came back with the most weirdest stories ever. While every family member knew his stories there was one story, he told and warned about. Even to me when I was six or so. Moral of the story is to never stay during night in the desert alone. It seems, once he drove to Chile, he had a contract and the way there was okay. I made the travel myself later in life it's beautiful. Whenever he was done he usually spent a few bucks on booze, but this time due to a family gathering he wanted to come back as soon as possible. So instead of drinking in some bar, he decided to sleep a bit at the Atacama Desert. Well, it's a desert, and he had parked way outside the road and a few miles before the next village. He sleeps and wakes up on someone singing. He is confused and thinks it's the radio but the radio is not on. Then the singing stops and it sounds more like a scream of help. That's when he wants to get out and help, but still he is confused. He said, he started the motor and the lights, to see where and who was there, he also did open the window a bit and yelled asking what happened. It was nothing, and right then when he decides to get out anyway, he catches a movement in the corner of where the lights end. It looked like a woman but the face was pitch dark. He freaks out and drives away, non-stop until he reached home. Whatever he saw or thought he saw, every time he told the story his face went pale. Even my grandmother commented how he was usually a very jolly guy but whatever happened in the Atacama Desert freaked him totally out. Like most people here this didn't happen to me. One of my good friends from middle school had a stepfather who was a truck driver for a good amount of time. He was a tough son of a bitch, I never saw him not look like he could kill someone. Except one time, when he told us why he stopped driving trucks. He was on a long trip from somewhere down in Texas to Boise, Idaho. By the time he hit the freeway close to Boise he had already been up for 24 hours, either way I don't believe he could have seen this coming. Outside of Boise he was driving, late at night at the fastest legal speed when out of nowhere he sees someone sit straight up in the middle of the road. He didn't have enough time to even hit the brakes, not that it would have helped. She was decapitated on the spot. He later found out she was tweaked out. I don't think even if he wasn't sleep deprived he would have seen her lying in the road. From what the police could gather, she walked out there, sat down and eventually fell asleep in the road. No one knows who she was, or how she got that far out. Not a trucker but I drive a lot of miles in a company truck for my oilfield company. I am on call 24-7 so I am out at all hours. One night after a long day on a location in the Oklahoma Panhandle which is rather remote and sparsely populated, I was driving back to the town where my shop is located. 
I got too sleepy to drive and decided to pull over and nap until the sun came up. So, I pulled off of the two-lane highway down a county road and parked on the side of that road. It's safer than pulling off on the shoulder of the highway and no headlights to bother you. This was Slash's common practice for me. I left my pickup running and turned the headlights off and leaned my seat back and fell asleep pretty quick with the AC on low and the radio turned off. I slept pretty good for maybe an hour and then I guess I was having strange dreams so I woke up but just kept laying there because I was groggy. The wind was picking up and sort of shaking the truck with random strong gusts. Lots of wind in Oklahoma. Eventually, I started to imagine I was hearing whispering or murmurs but I attributed it to the wind in my sleepy state or maybe the radio being still on but low volume. I kept hearing it so I sat up and turned the headlights back on to look around. The lights illuminated the dirt road to my side and in front of me. About 50 feet in front of my truck and extending down the road into the dark where my headlights faded out were maybe 20 coyotes all milling around and sniffling around in the gravel of the road. Their eyes reflecting in the lights. Coyotes usually run from light and avoid humans and their noise at all cost. There was no fear in these coyotes and I was sort of struck by how many there were all standing in the road. They all eventually moved off into the dark as a group. I wasn't really afraid as I was inside my truck but my feeling was an uneasy one. So, I got back on the highway and went home. After reading through a majority of the comments on this thread, my curiosity was piqued and I called my mom up to ask her if my great-grandfather, a trucker during the 60s, had ever told her a creepy story of being on the road. To my surprise, she said there was one story he told her as a cautionary tale. It's not about parking overnight somewhere, but I thought it might fit in here just the same. He said he was driving through somewhere pretty rural a small town with a few houses here and there. As he was making his way down the road, he saw a large cardboard box tumble down a hill and come to a stop pretty much directly in his path on the road. It was too late for him to break, but why would he? It's just a cardboard box, it's not like it would hurt his truck if he ran over it, so he kept chugging forward. At nearly the last second, he said something came over him and he immediately swerved to the right to avoid hitting the box. When he looked in his rearview mirror, he saw two little kids scramble out of the box and back up the hill. It's amazing what little kids in a small town will do for fun. I still feel sick to my stomach after hearing my mom tell that story. My father-in-law is a trucker in Australia. He told me a story of one night, in the middle of Outback, not a soul in sight and hundreds of KMs between towns, Australia is huge, especially on the west coast where we are, pitch black night, a tire blows out. He pulls to the shoulder and starts the task of changing. Feeling uneasy, he keeps looking over his shoulders. Something isn't right. Working fast, telling himself to stop being a scared cat. Then, all of a sudden a hand lands on his shoulder. Hey there mate, you have a spare smoke? An aboriginal man has wandered up to him like it was a normal thing. In the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the night. He says, no mate, I don't smoke, so the man just walks away into the darkness. He reckons he aged about 20 years that night. I was driving overnight in a very low populated area. Due to circumstances I was seriously sleep deprived. Driving in a poorly lit stretch of woods, my headlights started to cast shadows through the rails on the side of the road and started playing on the trees on either side. It looked and felt like I was driving across an ocean. And then the hallucination started. When you are seriously sleep deprived, you'll start to see shadows flicking across the edges of your field of vision. Shadowy figures started appearing in the water next to the road, swimming alongside me. They looked like monstrous mermaids, jumping in and out of the water. The Dutch roads are notorious for having very few truck stops that actually have space for a real truck. So I drove for another hour taunted by these figures. First truck stop I pull into and ready myself for a nap. I wake up a couple of hours later and one of the figures was in the cab with me, looking at me. I freeze, terrified for my life. I couldn't move until I calmed down enough to start noticing that while it seems to be moving and breathing, it doesn't seem to move that much. And then I realized it was my coat, slung across the seat. Panic subsided and I used the adrenaline rush to drive the two more hours I had to go. Other time, less spooky but creepy enough, a truck stop I was parked at was infested with lot lizards. I had already seen some of the less lizardy types get into trucks. I was reading a book when suddenly I hear my handle of the passenger door being pulled. It was locked, luckily, but that didn't stop the unseen puller to try and try to open it. It stops for a second and I suddenly feel the cab swinging a bit like someone was on the ladder. Up comes this horrible visage of rotting, missing teeth with a balding head and so much eyeliner it could be called face liner. She mimes giving me a blowjob, but I refuse. 
She jumps off and I see her storming off, furious about something. Most of the other truckers were laughing at me. She was well known amongst the local truckers for her wiles. So, desert in Australia, I had just left Marla Bore heading north, 30 years ago, all dirt road back then, where the pub had a standoff with about 200 pissed off aboriginals who had been walking for a few weeks after a big corroboree down south, the group had caused trouble elsewhere so the pub went into lockdown, guns came out from behind bars and they eventually put down the rocks they threatened to smash the place with and moved on, rolled a ute with about 15 people in it at the railway crossing, leaving a couple of injured kids and adults behind. Flying doctor was called. We also heard we had the bone pointed at us, not good, aboriginal curse. I left at dusk, motorcycle, a few hours later and was going to camp by my lonesome then realized I had no idea where the group was and didn't want to be caught alone. So when I saw a 4WD camper I stopped and asked if I could crash next to them, we had stakes and got ripped off our tits on some damn good hooch. I was in a tent, woke up and thought there was dogs scampering around and jumping over the tent and aboriginals standing outside with spears, had weird moonlight shadows on the tent that looked like silhouettes, while somebody was using clapsticks, complete and absolute feeling of complete dread is the only way I could explain it. The wind had picked up quite a bit but it didn't feel that strong, the clapping was perfectly rhythmic, and I could hear dogs panning like they were 5 feet away. The people who I had stopped to camp with thought I was rocking their truck and he got out with a handgun looking for me, he was equally freaked and only calmed down when he realized I was still in my little pup tent, we chatted in the morning and he heard dogs and clap sticks too and his missus was in tears when he got out with a gun, man it was one freaky uneasy night's sleep. I looked in the morning and we were in low salt bush, just scrub, no trees anywhere and nothing I could see that could explain the clap stick noise. He wasn't some easily spooked dude, manager of an outback pub, and neither am I. I will never be able to properly explain that experience. Not a trucker, but have a spooky story. About three to four years ago, my dad and I took a 25-hour journey from Southern California to McAllen, Texas, Mexis, as some call it. This was late November. Around 5 to 6 p.m., still plenty light outside, this white car that appeared to be fresh off the lot, no numbers on the plate, just the dealership plates, starts pulling in front of us repeatedly, and cutting us off amidst the freeway traffic. The windows were heavily tinted so you couldn't see who was inside. It was pretty irritating and they continued to do this, so we sped up and eventually lost them. It began growing dark outside, I was tired, and I fell asleep as my dad continued driving. At this point the freeway was empty, we had passed the major cities in Texas. There was nobody else on the road. I woke up at about 1.30 am because I could feel our car alternately speeding up and slowing down. I sat up and rubbed eyes and noticed we were alone on the freeway, wait, holy shit, was that the same white car behind us? I look at my dad who didn't say a word, but continued driving very seriously. My dad's a very confident driver, macho man type guy. We were going up to 110 miles per hour, this white car would match our speed, then quickly switch lanes and pull right in front of us, over and over again. When we'd slow down, they'd slow down. When we sped up, so did they. This is some pretty scary shit when you're in the middle of nowhere in the middle of the night. Obviously I'm panicking, I was 19, like what's happening? Are we going to be okay? I don't know what they're trying to do. It's like a game of cat and mouse, my dad says. I guess this has been going on for at least 30 minutes. So my dad decides to end this once and for all. He starts gunning it way we fast, close to 117 to 120 miles per hour until they're out of sight. Which works. He takes the closest exit, pulls off the road, we went under an underpass, he switches off the lights, kills the engine, takes a gun out of his center console, gets out of his car, and just stands there. My dad is a very calm, stoic man, ex-cop who never shows emotion. I was convinced we were both going to die, or I was going to be brutally kidnapped by the cartel or something. About two minutes later, slowly, slowly, I hear gravel beneath wheels, my heart freezes, and I see the white car, eerily slow, exit the freeway, and turn the corner in the road, towards us. The lights shine directly on us, under the overpass, illuminating my dad, firmly positioned, both hands on his gun, pointed directly at them. They just passed us, continued their slow drive down the road, towards the gas station. We immediately turned the car around, went back to the freeway, booked the hell out of the gas pedal, and never saw them again. This is more of a creepy than funny thing. I was driving in a team truck and I would drive the night shift out it was about 1am and I was listening to Art Bell on Sirius slash XM. Now I am the biggest skeptic on the planet, but I also love a good spooky story, so I always enjoyed listening to his show during the short time he was on there. 
I am rolling along on I-40, no traffic, everything going smooth and these guys on the radio are talking about taking digital recorders to cemeteries and recording voices of the dead. A lot of the voices were supposed to be children begging for help. It was seriously creeping me out. All of a sudden the biggest fucking skunk I have ever seen appears in my headlights. I screamed like a little girl. I hit it, can't swerve the truck for animals, because you can roll the rig too easily. My co-driver was woken up by the scream and came out of the sleeper to see what had happened. Then the smell hit. I had had the AC on just fan with outside air because it was cool out and that skunk odor filled the cab. We had to pull over to the shoulder and get out to get fresh air. That truck smelled like a skunk for weeks. I was loading hay in winter in northern Minnesota almost by Canada. This type of load is usually picked up in a field. There are no street lights or any lights for that matter. I finished getting the load on my trailer and the farmer said I could sleep here. Farmer took off as I was throwing my tarps on in the darkness. Now I'm alone, in the middle of the field with just a flashlight and my truck lights. I get down to throw my bungees and I hear howling. I have a husky back at home, so I know what that sounds like. Except this howling is getting closer to my truck. I hurry up and jump back in the truck to warm up. I just sit there and turn on my headlights to see if something was out there. Sure enough it's a wolf in front of my truck. I just leave my truck idle overnight as it's cold out. Jump in the bunk and say screw this I'll leave when I have hours too. Never got back out of the truck until daylight. Not a trucker, but was making the drive to my new university from halfway across the country. It's dark and I'm driving through pitch black forested rural areas, but my destination is only another two hours away, so I'm going for it. I'm tired, but determined, maybe a little too weary to still be on the road when it's so dark. Then, as I'm making my way up the slow curve of a hill, I see four bright blue lights glaring in the distance through the trees, hovering maybe five feet off the ground, but it's too dark to tell how far they are away from me. I'm freaking out, I don't know if I should slow down or speed the fuck up, but either way I'm getting closer and closer. It only takes about 30 seconds for me to round the curve in the road, but it felt like forever my blood has run cold and my mind is racing because I watch way too many stupid UFO conspiracy documentaries. Finally I can tell where the lights are in relation to me, I'll be directly passing them soon and I swear I'd never been so on edge before, if my hands weren't so tightly gripped around the will they'd be shaking. Christmas lights. They were four plastic stars with blue lights in the center, having been hung up on a few trees. As I was breathing a sigh of relief and regaining my composure, I passed the farmhouse they most likely belong to. I've had some odd highway encounters in my time. Not far from the Dalles in Oregon State is some highway that's built out in the Columbia River, water both sides for short distances. I was with friends headed to Portland and all of a sudden a huge, tall figure appears in the headlights. Trench coat and a red face or balaclava in the center of the lane. Swerved last second as he was stumbling towards the driver's side. Car behind was following us, saw their headlights swerve but they stayed behind us. There was no evidence of damage to the guardrails from an accident, no lights, car or motorbike on the road. Stopped a few miles ahead talked to driver of car behind me. Agreed that it freaked us all out pretty good. Another memorable incident few years later. Very late Christmas Eve on a remote highway in Canada. No traffic for 100s of kilometers. Come over the top of a hill doing about 70 miles per hour slash 120 kilometers. A figure in the middle of the road, narrow two lane highway, appears. I figure I can just swerve around but she shuffles sideways to maintain her position in front of the truck. I realize that I'm not going to avoid her so I hammer the brakes, still intent on getting around her. I managed to stop about 10 feet in front of her. Look like the wife from the shinning in a purple full-length quilted coat with plastic Safeway bags in both hands. She ran and threw herself on the hood all the while screaming. I threw it in reverse and she ran for the passenger side. This was the opportunity to get by her. Hit the fuel and cranked left and watched her in the rear view mirror. I took off fast as I could. Few minutes later, while looking for a CD between the seats, I found a cell phone that had been missing from work for weeks. There was just enough battery and signal to call the police. Grew up next to an exit off I-70 in rural Ohio. We have about 40 acres and the only things that border both truck stops are our house and a very large cemetery. Creepiest thing as a kid was when a pack of, very large, dogs appeared out of nowhere every night. We could hear them and had no idea where they were coming from and never saw them during the day. Eventually one night they got into our livestock pens and were trying to kill our pigs. I was stuck sleeping in a recliner with a broken leg and couldn't get up but I called out to my parents and my dad ran down with his rifle and my little brother. 
heard shots, he ended up shooting one of the dogs that was trying to kill the pigs colon slash next day animal control had come to come out and they ended up finding the dog's owner. Some dude had been living in a trailer at one of the truck stops by us and had no money to leave, had been stuck there for a couple months, and was just letting all 10 of his dogs roam at night. Weird. I think one more was put down, I still feel bad for those pups. Most recently they've changed the independent slash shady stop to a loves, large slash commercial stop, and a lot more interesting people have begun to show up. Most recently someone robbed the gas station and took off on foot. My aunt, who lives in the house next to ours, found the dude casually sleeping in a tree the next day in the woods behind our house. She then found a different set of people sleeping close to that area not long after the first incident. Running a load of 12 paper rolls out of Washington, headed for Phoenix. Decide that because I'm tired, and have a load that would easily tip me over, it would be a good idea to sleep. I forget the highway, but I come across an abandoned motel in the middle of nowhere. Pull off, and quickly check the dirt for any surprises like trucks swallowing potholes, glass and other things. Happy that the spot looks good, I park and just leave the marker lights on. Being winter, I don't need to idle, and just can open the windows in the sleeper. Cool. Soon I'm in bed, fast asleep. I'm find myself awake suddenly, and can't figure out why. I lay there in the darkness, when I hear it. A faint scraping. Metal on metal. Slowly, I sit up, and pull a shirt on, and grab my 4D cell maglite, I hear the metal noise, getting louder, but only slightly. Opening the bunk curtains, I look out the windows and see nothing out of the ordinary that can be seen from the lights of my truck. Sitting in the driver's seat, I turn the key to accessory, and roll down the driver window. I can hear the noise. Lighting a cigarette, and deciding I'll go have a look. Climbing out of the cab, and turning on the mag light, I looked around, and saw nothing, but could still hear the noise. Walking along the truck, checking my lock and seal, and checking for vandalism of my truck and finding nothing on the one side. I hear the noise again and turn around as I see something skitter into the brush. Thinking it an animal, I walk around the other side of the trailer. I hear the noise and send light in the direction. I swear, chastisement of myself. The noise is a metal gate swinging slightly in the breeze. I live in the US, and I drive over the road. Typically three weeks at a time and I go from one side of the country to the next, but typically stay between Texas and the northeastern states. Anyways, I have plenty of stories about lot lizards, trucks tipping over in front of me, I have pics to prove it as well. People begging for cash, people trying to get into my truck in the middle of the night, blah blah blah. However, I will never forget this one time, in fact it was recent, like three weeks ago recent. I was stopped in Maryland at a tiny truck stop that can hold maybe five to six trucks. Typically truckers will go to a pilot, flying J, loves, etc. However I've always liked going to the smaller lesser known ones because spots are almost always available, and no one messes with me. Anyways, I finished almost 11 hours of driving, and it's around 2 am and I'm so extremely tired, and I have a long day ahead of me. Not unusual, but tonight was different. I back into a small spot, just me, there's no lights, nothing. Everything is off, and the only light is from the lightning because it was storming at the time. Anyways, I'm getting ready to unwind and go into the sleeper, but something kept me from doing that immediately like I always do. I locked my doors, finished some paperwork, and then just kept looking at the sky through my windshield. Maybe five minutes goes by when all of a sudden I feel this overwhelming sense of fear come over me, and when this happens, I see this ball of purple, white bluish light in the clouds just. Dance? I guess I can call it dancing because that's what it looked like. So here I am, dead as fuck tired, scared shitless staring at this ball of bright light dancing within the clouds. It was terrifying, and mesmerizing at the same time. Okay so my dad has been a truck driver my entire life and then some. So when I was younger I used to ride with him during certain school vacations. Like spring break, so some of summer break, some Christmas break. You get the idea. So when I was younger I was a very very tiny girl like super super tiny. So when I used to ride with my dad on long hauls, I would get my blanket and pillow and get down underneath the dash in the passenger side like where your feet would go if you're sitting in the passenger side seat. Well if you ever seen a semi sometimes there is a small tiny window down there in the bottom of the door on each side. I like to sit down there with my pillow and blanket and read books and watch out that little window as my dad drove. Well one evening we had stopped at a truck stop for my dad to fuel up and to get something to eat for us. I had been asleep for a little while before dad had pulled into the truck stop. All I remember is waking up to some random weird looking old guy looking through that little tiny window at me. Freaked me the hell out his face was like literally pressed up against the glass. 
I have never been so startled in my entire life. Thankfully my dad must have been like two steps away because within 10 seconds he disappeared and I heard dad yell and ended up jump back in the truck and we left. But that was definitely a freaky ass experience on my part at least. About 14 to 15 years ago, two of my buddies had a conference out of state to attend. They decided to take the entire week off, drive there and do a road trip basically. Arrived there fine, conference is over, blah, blah and now they're heading back home. First night coming back, they grab a hotel to stay at. Second day, they decide to just stay up and power their way home. As night comes and gets late, the passenger starts dozing off. They decide it's safer to stop at the next rest area and crash. As they arrive, for the most part the lot is pretty empty. A few trucks and some smaller cars sprinkled around. Passenger falls asleep but the driver can. He closes his eyes but just can't doze off. There's a small light just where the bathrooms are at, and for some reason he's feeling paranoid. He'll close his eyes, and then open them just to check that spot over and over. Finally he dozes off a bit. He wakes up in a panic still paranoid and he checks the spot again. Just at the last moment, he claims he sees what looks like somebody going behind the building. He tries to calm himself. After laying back down for a bit, he sneaks back up and he claims he sees what looks like a woman with frizzled hair and very worn tattered clothes just walk and disappear into the bushes in the distance where the bathrooms are. He panics and wakes up passenger. After explaining the situation, they stay up to see if anything else happens. Nothing else happened. That morning, they quickly scout the spot. Behind the bushes where he claimed to see her was long brick wall, so obviously you can't just walk through it. Most likely could have been a homeless lady but they were at a rest area next to nothing but highway. Wow, I actually have a relevant story. I'm not a trucker, but I was headed from Salt Lake City, Utah to Albuquerque, New Mexico late on a Friday evening. When I got to southern Utah and near the Arizona border, I had gotten tired enough to need to pull over and sleep. I took a county road off of some highway exit, and was driving down it to pull off so that I could sleep without headlights interrupting me or getting woken up by a state trooper and being asked to move along. That can be pretty annoying, and as a person who sleeps in his car a fair amount on road trips to get a few hours before pushing on again, it's just uncomfortable to be woken up. Anyway, the following happened as I'm driving along this county road a few miles away from the highway, at about 3 in the morning, and suddenly lights come on right behind me with a vehicle that is very close on my ass. It's a large Dodge truck with a light bar and 4 or 5 hella lights that are shining into my rear view, blinding me. I try to pull over so that they can get around, heart beating and very scared. They pull over behind me. So I take off and try to lose them. But I am in a shitty older Saturn sedan, and they are in a pickup truck with four wheel drive on a road they are familiar with. It becomes clear that I'm not going to be able to lose them, they're swerving behind me, they're trying to pull up beside me, and they're flicking their lights. This was a very scary experience. I thought it through and had no idea what road I pulled off of, so calling 911 wouldn't have helped me since I couldn't tell them where to show up to help me. Regardless this emergency was happening now and I needed to deal with it. It was a fight or flight situation, and my flight was not working. So, I decided to fight. I always travel with a small weapon of some kind, and what I had between my driver's side door and my seat was a very large hunting knife, so I pulled my e-brake suddenly and slammed to a stop. As soon as my car stopped moving I got out and started running at the truck, terrified but yelling like I was just fucking insane and ready for battle. They were sliding to a stop behind me and actually almost hit my Saturn by the time that I was almost at their truck. They had thrown it in reverse, and were backing up. I could see inside of their truck and it looked like some teenagers on the bench seat. The look of fright on their faces made me more emboldened, and I roared and yelled and cussed as they spun around and took off. It occurred to me after that, while calming down from a really terrifying experience, that they were just kids out having some fun on a weekend night in a rural area. But to me it really felt like I was being attacked and maybe they were going to try to kill me, I still think back on it with a lot of fear, because it was just a helpless situation, and my only reaction that seemed appropriate was to try to at least hurt them before they killed me. So somewhere out there now 10 years later, are a group of young adults in their mid-20s to late-20s who have a crazy story about some redneck who turned the tables on them and charged them with a knife while they were just having a little fun. My grandma was a truck driver who delivered all sorts of things across the US, she has all sorts of interesting stories but the most intriguing to me was the time her and her husband, truck drive together, stopped at a rest stop late night. My grandma had gotten out of their truck to use the restroom, on her way out leaving the restroom she decided to walk around the rest stop. She described the area as a sidewalk that went around in a full rectangle with shelters, playgrounds and other things in the middle. 
There was a man at the end of the sidewalk who my grandma had seen, at first he looked like any other truck driver until he jumped and hid behind a post of one of the shelters. Freaked out, my grandma decided not to walk any farther along the sidewalk, my grandma says the man kept sticking his head out every 20 or so seconds as to see if she was getting any closer to him. Frightened, she decided to cut through the middle grass area to get back to their truck. The man peeked out again and saw she was gone, my grandma says he then ran the opposite direction from her with what looked like a knife and jumped a fence. She hauled ass and left the truck stoop ASAP. Thank you.